So this video isn't going to be a meta build or which guns to use. This is just how the waves of Onslaught are actually structured and how, how they work. Just so that you can take your build and, and maximize it the most by knowing what's coming up and what's ahead of you. The best way to maximize any build is by knowing the activity you're doing. What are the best spots to use your abilities or use your weapons or use your heavy. I really do think we are at the point in the game where most builds can succeed if you know how to play right. And part of knowing how to play right is knowing the encounters you're doing. Tizzle made a great video showcasing him how he managed to do a way 50 legend onslaught on like every subclass in the game. So it is possible to do on any subclass. So this will help you get in the right mindset and, and know what's coming up. But we're gonna start at the very basics of the structure of Onslaught and then we'll go into a bit more detail later on. Very basically, Onslaught is in five rounds of 10 waves. Waves one through 10, 21 through 30, so on so forth, all the way up to wave 50. Just think of them in groups of 10. Whenever I talk about like wave five, throughout this video, I mean any round that's ending in a five. So for example, five, 15, 25, 35. Whenever I say five, I mean all of those carrying on. Very simply, round six is always the spark dunking phase, which at round 26, the spark runners that you need to kill are actually, they turn into major versions. So you just watch out for that. When you get into the later rounds, they do swap up to higher difficulty enemies. And every 10th wave will be a boss wave. And there are four bosses for hive and there's four bosses for fallen and you'll link Encounter each one once and they will just be random but you'll encounter each one of them once before you get to the final boss so you can always keep track of which bosses you've already done i'm sure most people know this by now but waves three and nine are your augment waves these are the waves where the special enemies pop up these are the demolitionists the shielded demolitionists the sky bombers the shielded sky bomber the mines and the tormentor i'm sure you're all familiar with these at this point if you played any level of onslaught what you may not know and and how these determine what you're going to get. Each one of the augments will spawn one time before you see another one. So between rounds one and 30, you will see one of every one of the augment waves. But once you reach round uh, 33, a new cycle of randomly picking one of these augments will happen. You'll never see any augment three times. You'll only maximize see uh, some augments twice. In the final set of waves, from 30 onwards, you have a 66% chance of seeing a Tormentor ever appear again. What are they like super helpful? I, I, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I, I've been doing a lot of LFG. But if it's if it's a wave nine, just use your heavy ammo to clear the ads. Uh, you're gonna rally at the boss anyway. I know some people might be holding on to he heavy ammo for things like Envious Assassin. Envious Assassin isn't that useful in these bosses. I know you just got that shiny edge transit, but the, the Envious Assassin isn't going to help that much. Just just dump your ammo, especially if you got something like Demolitionists that spawn on the, on the on a wave nine. should also point out that the only major enemies, these are the boss level enemies that appear on wave three and nine are the augmented bosses. So these are the demos, the, the Shielded Sky Bomber or the Sky Bombers and or the Tormentor or whoever. Those are the only enemies that are uh, mages throughout that entire round. And augment waves always appear from the same side, depending on what AD you, you're at. For example, I've been playing a lot of Midtown. If you're on the canal side of Midtown, the augment wave will always appear from the left-hand side. So just make sure you know where the augment waves appear from, from it on the maps you're playing and on each ADU spot. Now waves one, four, and seven, I call small waves. Um, I don't think they have an official name in the game or anything, but these are waves that are much shorter and have way less ads uh, and less saboteurs, which are the guys that drop the batteries. One, four, and seven are just generally shorter waves. So you don't really want to be popping a super like halfway through these waves. They're, they're a lot less difficult and you're not going to get much value out of using a, a late super. An early super you can probably get a lot of value on at the start of the wave, but mid round or definitely at the end of the round, it's, it's not worth it because you definitely need those supers going into the next rounds. Waves two five and eight are what i call large waves and these are where major level saboteurs can spawn these are the boss versions of the saboteurs that have much 
health, but they only appear on waves 2, 5, and 8. But these can be very useful if you're running Aeons or uh, Cenotath, so you can generate heavy off of them. But I will say, Fallen can actually spawn additional mages in different rounds. I'm not sure which rounds they are, because I've not been playing too many Fallen versions myself. Just know that Fallen actually spawn additional mages in different rounds outside of the Sabotars. Fallen is objectively harder because of that, and dealing with Briggs instead of Ogres on many of the augments. 2, 5, and 8 are the rounds that can be the bonus waves, which have the side objective, which will give you the heavy ammo crate. These are either shooting the little things in the air, doing it quickly, collecting the little pyramids, those kind of things. At least one of those rounds every 10 waves will be a heavy round. And I, I feel like I should say it. Indicate to your teammates when you're about to pick up the heavy, like either type it in the chat or, or like shoot the crate or, or something um, to get your teammates to come over to it. So don't pull it without your team to make sure everyone gets it. The enemy rotations are very predictable. Once you've done your first 10 waves, you can know where enemies are gonna come every round afterwards. Every wave one through 10 will spawn a different variety of enemies. But let's say if you get Cursed Thrill on like round two, every round going forward that ends in a two, so 12, 22, 32, 42, will always be Cursed Thrill until, until you get a new run. And the same uh, happens with uh, Shriekers or Knights or, or any of those. Uh, they will always repeat every 10 rounds. So once you've done your first 10 rounds, you know that those problem enemies are going to be coming up on the high difficulty rounds. So you can know when best to save your super or save heavy for those specific things. Speaking of which, one of the biggest problems I've seen running a lot of LFG recently has been the double Shriekers. So if you play the high version, you may have noticed that sometimes Shriekers respawn and sometimes they don't, sometimes they're bosses, sometimes they're not. And I just want to like provide the explanation of why that happens. So you don't get caught out by the double Shrieker or the boss Shrieker or, or, or anything like that. So the Shriekers are the saboteurs for that wave and they will only spawn one time on small waves. So that is waves one, four, and seven. And they will be regular orange bar Shriekers on waves one, four and seven but because they already have two locations they will respawn on the larger waves so you can get additional batteries as you may notice if you have let's say night saboteurs you will have a lot of night spawn on the larger waves that are you know big boss by boss health ones compared to the shriekers where they only two spawn at a time but they will respawn but they will only be boss bars on the waves two five and eight when you kill them they will respawn or if you're on an augment wave they will only be regular orange bars because the only boss mobs on the augment waves will be the augment boss themselves like the tormentor or the sky bombers so the shriekers on augment waves will be orange bar but they will still respawn so again just to go over it on waves one four and seven there will be orange bar shriekers that spawn one time. On waves two, five, and eight, there will be boss shriekers that spawn two times. And on waves three and nine, there will be orange bar shriekers that spawn two times. So the best time to get shriekers ideally is on one, four, and seven. So you can just shoot them down once and never have to deal with them again. Whereas obviously respawning shriekers on any round is annoying, but respawning shriekers, even if they're not as, not as chunky, can still fuck you over on like a torment around. Uh, I hope this video provides some level of insight on how the waves actually work throughout onslaught if you still have any more questions i'll try and clear them up in the comments if you have any best of luck getting some shinies i i i i, I have literally got 10 shiny mountain tops and not one of them is auto loading recombination pray to me